And no matter how many times I've done so, I always feel just a little strange as we approach Rosh Hashanah to have this idea of the connotations of new beginnings uh, that it's in September. Um, it doesn't seem right somehow. And yet, for my family, this year really is a time of new beginnings. My sister has just made Aliyah. My elder granddaughter is just moving into secondary school. And I've just retired as a pulpit rabbi. I imagine you're saying, well, what's that got to do with new beginnings? Well, it's because I don't believe in endings. For me, everything is a new beginning. It's a new time, a new challenge, a new phase in my life. And actually, Rosh Hashanah is that, or can be, for all of us. We can all look to see what we want out of life, or, or perhaps better, what can we actually do with our lives? What can we make of them? We can learn lots about new beginnings from our tradition. The Torah tells us that Abraham had his call, his divine call. Isaac after the Akedah. Jacob when he was fleeing from his brother Esau. Joseph when he went down to Egypt. All of these are stories we know from the Torah about new beginnings. And Tanakh, the rest of Tanakh, also tells us about Job, about Jonah, Jeremiah, Daniel. They all had new beginnings. Their stories can provide us with models that we need to not just look to see whether we're happy with our lives, whether we want to change them or not, but also the way in which we can go about doing it. And you know, if we don't get it right the first time, it doesn't really matter. The rabbis tell us that there's an anagram of the word very shit, which means in the beginning. And from that we derive that the world was created on the first of Tishri. Rosh Hashanah is the birthday of the world. And so it's very appropriate as individuals that we use Rosh Hashanah as a new opportunity, a new challenge, a new beginning.